Welcome to this edition of Diligence Inside Europe's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter and I'll be your host for today's show. Today we're going to talk about Spencer Stewart's 2020 France Board Index, Changes in the Boardroom. And joining me as my guest is Angelis Garcia Poveda, who's the leader of France's board practice for Spencer Stewart. Welcome, Angelis. Thank you, Thomas. I'm delighted to be with you this afternoon. A um, little bit about you first. You serve on Spencer Stewart's uh, worldwide board of directors, and you also are the chairwoman for Legrand, a GAC 40 company. So it gives you, um, in addition today to providing us some interesting information, you have a sort of an insider's view as well, which I think will certainly be interesting. So first, can you tell us a little bit about the France Board Index? Certainly. So as you know, we do publish every year board indexes in most uh, markets of the world. Um, and France is no exception. We've been uh, publishing this index for 25 years now. Um, for a long while, it covered the CAC 40 companies. Now we have also expanded the index to the top 120 listed companies in France to have a broader view of governance trends. Um, we use um, a number of sources, all public sources, um, not only the uh, universal registration documents, obviously, but also the results of the APSAs, uh, websites, and we double check information with the companies themselves to make sure that we, we provide the best accuracy. So it's a combination of data collection, then a lot of analysis, and we take out the trends that we, we see on the market and follow them year on year. Uh, certainly, we're familiar um, on this show with the U.S., and we've also had a chance to look at the U.K. and Germany, so we're anxious to hear how all those other European countries compare to France. So, um, Angelis, what's the, what is the highlights that you that jumped out at you when you first saw the board index for France? It's a great question. There's, there's a lot of information in it, but I would say one of the highlights or readings that we got this year is that good governance is no longer a matter of size. There, there has been a movement in the last years um, for more and more companies and even smaller size companies um, adopting some of the good governance trends and practices um, with a, a mix of, uh, you know, external pressure, um, one has to say, investors asking for more and more things, proxies asking for more and more things. Um, also, the uh, regulatory environment that is um, actually getting more and more involved, but also, uh, frankly, the fact that boards are becoming more professional and that CEOs and chairmen um, have also evolving mentalities. So we can see that in areas like board assessment um, in France, today 75% of CAC 40 companies and 80% of SBF 120 conduct regularly external board assessments, which uh, you know, hold the mirror against themselves to uh, look for areas for improvement. That, that's one example. Another one is the, um, the way boards are working around successions. Um, and when I say succession, successions, I talk about the CEO, but also the board members themselves, nomination committees, and more and more looking with a medium to long-term perspective, uh, thinking about the competencies they will need in the future, and therefore anticipating those needs by uh, comparing um, the, the, the competencies they have in the room with what they will need and starting to think about in, incorporating new people. So the, all that is, in, in my perspective, very positive. Um, and it means that boards are actually in an, in an active position rather than a passive position, just responding to requirements, if that makes sense. One of the areas that um, we seem to talk about on every um, country's discussion is diversity. Um, I don't have to tell you as a chairwoman um, of a major company in France, but um, which by the way, um, uh, Legrand gets a good score for having the 
uh, chair of the board be a, a, a female, but um, there certainly is a lot of pressure from institutional investors um, to make sure that there is diversity, all kinds of diversity on the board. So what did the, um, what did the index say about diversity? Well, um, I would say the first element this year is that gender diversity is no longer a question. As you know, in France, um, we have a law named uh, Copé Zimmerman, um, which um, actually um, uh, constrained companies to build that gender diversity over the years with very specific, uh, with a very specific ask to have at least 40% of the less represented gender in the room um, for, any, for any board to be compliant. Um, today, uh, the results are, are incredible because we, we do have 45% of women um, directors in uh, in the top 120 companies in France. But it's also interesting to, not, to note, they are 70% of independent directors. And um, by tackling the gender diversity question, we have seen uh, a number of other diversities come into the boardrooms because it, it's helped chairs and chairs of non-cos ask themselves the question, what do I need for the future? So we started seeing, because of these recruitments, we started seeing uh, digital profiles come into the boardroom, um, ESG profiles come into the boardroom, generational shifts. Boards have actually become younger over time. Um, in France due to that. And today, um, I think it's about 18% of uh, board members in France are, um, are uh, 50 years old or less, um, which is uh, quite different from the picture you would find in other countries. Um, so, so one angle of diversity led to many angles of diversity. Um, we still have a lot of work to do uh, first of all, in leadership roles, the number of women chairs and women CEO is still very small. Um, you have, you know, it's less than 10 um, in, in, both, um, in both cases in the entire 120 uh, space. But there's some encouragement because you, you can see women profiles taking uh, committee chairs uh, roles. You have 55% of audit committees are being uh, today chaired by females, 63% uh, of NUMCOs, 56% of REMCOs. That is actually the pipeline of candidates for future leadership roles. Um, and then the next frontier will be the executive committees, which is, of course, it's a different story. Uh, but if we, if we are talking about governance in 10 years from now, uh, those are the profiles that will be accessing the boards. So we need to start working on it as from now. And what you're talking about is very related to your previous comment about succession. Um, you know, making sure that you have this um, crystal ball to sort of look in the future on what skill sets you need, looking at candidates, making sure that you got qualified, both women and people of color, you know, to fill some of those positions. So. Um, certainly, we're seeing a good trend acro across the globe with this. Um, probably taking a little longer than most people would like, but uh, we should all be happy with the trends, I think, on what's happened. And uh, I think we'll see some progress, certainly in the short years ahead. So exactly we, have a couple, right. we have a couple of minutes left. What else sort of jumped out at you that is worth mentioning about the index? I would mention two topics. One would be the dissociation of roles between the chairmanship role and the CEO role, between non-exec and exec. That um, this year is a milestone year in the sense that it's the first time that um, you have a majority of uh, big listed companies in the CAC 40 where those two roles are dissociated. And this, which might seem um, sort of um, normal life or normal governance in other markets was not in France and uh, has been the result of a lot of change and a lot of evolution. And um, there's, I would, I would make two comments on that. The first one is that the numbers show that progression is steady 
and that now the norm of the market has become more the dissociation versus non-dissociation. But beyond the numbers, also the kind of dissociation we see is different as well. And we think this one is durable. Um, it is no longer a dissociation that was temporarily helping the successor come on board before reuniting, which was something that we used to see in France many years ago. It's now there, we believe, here to stay. And the COVID crisis in that respect was interesting because we, we, we led a um, um, study among uh, board directors in Europe that showed that companies that had well-performing and balanced duos um, actually leading the governance responded better to the crisis because in, you know, collective intelligence, dialogue, healthy challenge were helpful to companies. And I think more and more companies are realizing that. So that would be one. The second big trend is the emerging uh, energy around uh, social impact and environment topics. And that also, uh, I believe, is here to stay. Um, it's, it's, uh, and, and the crisis did help by the way, also on those topics, because it shed the light on uh, the uh, responsibility that companies had in uh, things like purpose, in, um, in their impact in the world. And um, it became um, things that you know, were sort of long-term agenda items became actually tomorrow morning items. And um, we can see that boards are building responses to that. You have, if you look at the number of boards in the SBF 120 that have a committee that is namely in charge of CSR, the number has doubled since 2015, and it's now more than half. Um, if you look at the number of companies that integrate social and environment uh, KPIs in, in CEOs' compensation, that also has progressed considerably. It's more than 85% now. And the weight of those criteria has also grown. So I'm not saying we have all the responses, but we see signs of boards actually embracing the topic, putting it on the table and actually connecting the dots between the different committees to make sure that the agenda is integrated in the company strategy, as opposed to an item that you communicate on once a year, if that makes sense. So that also is very positive, I believe. So yes, it's uh, interesting to see from continent to continent and country to country, how many people are focusing creatively on forming committees that make sense for that individual company versus falling back on sort of the big three, as they say, um, audit, um, remuneration, and uh, nomgov. But it's now we're now seeing people say, okay, what do we what do we need to do in the form of of structuring committees to make sure that we're on top of the issues that are most important to our company. And I think that's a trend that we're gonna see further. It'll be interesting to see next year's uh, board index on what's happening in the ESG sort of uh, committee structure kind of um, uh, setup, so. Absolutely, I think it will impact committee structures. It will impact also the profiles that uh, uh, boards will welcome on board. Um, and it would also impact the ways of working and probably the need for boards to invest in constant learning and constant capability uh, raising, because those topics are complex and they require um, investing in, um, in uh, building uh, uh, knowledge matter in order to be relevant. So, um, you know, um, it's, uh, it's demanding, but it's, it's fascinating and uh, it's a great uh, way for boards to add value. Well, Spencer Stewart's got his work cut out for us for it because uh, there is no, to me, there, there is no more important position than all of the board chairs of, of our committee chairs, since that in today's world is, seems to be where the work gets done. And those are just such important positions for companies. I don't care 
which country, you know, or which continent you happen to be in. So um, I know we just sort of scratched the surface on information. Where can people who want to take a look at, at uh, France's board index, um, where can they go to get a copy of the results or of the whole report? Of course. Um, well, the the report um, is uh, available in, in its PDF version in the Spencer Stewart website, uh, www.spencerstewart.com. There's a whole section on boards and governance where you can find um, comparisons between uh, different countries. It's, it's very informative, so I encourage you to look there. If anybody would like to have a paper copy, um, we still print fewer of them, but some. So you can actually uh, request them um, to myself or Guillaume Keginer in the Paris office. And we'll be delighted to uh, ship that for you. Well, Angelus, thank you very much for taking the time to join us and good luck in that um, chairmanship that you have. Uh, that will, again, give you certainly an inside look at uh, some of the challenges that companies will have in um, building their board for the future. So thank you for taking the time to join us. No, thank you for the opportunity. I mean, anything we can do to promote good governance is a good investment. So thank you for that opportunity to share. Our pleasure. And that will conclude this edition of Inside Europe's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again very soon with another episode that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Mm -hmm.